video, we're talking about new AI techniques and we're merging traditional VFX workflows with those techniques. We're gonna go through a multi-step process to show how the digital matte painting was done from rough block out and rough sculpt all the way to lighting, temporary, and low res texture projection. And then how we bring this into AI and use upscale techniques to enhance the look and actually get this detail much faster than doing it manually. Then we'll bake it down and project it on a remesh geo in Nuke. Now you might be asking, why do we wanna do this approach? What is the benefit? The benefit is to not have to make every single asset in a very cost intensive way, right? So Quixel can solve some of this problem or if you do photo bashing, you know, you could take different models together and put them together, but you might not have full control over the composition. So this is actually a middle ground between photo bashing and creating your own assets. All right guys, so if you haven't seen how this works, this is Adobe Substance Modeler and it's a VR modeling software. Um, essentially how it works is you can move around, you can sculpt things uh, in real time and everything's really fast. Um, I did import this into centimeters, not meters, because if you do meters, it does get a little bit slow. So you want to find a good resolution for the mesh. So when you import an OBJ, uh, just play around with the, the scale there, depending on the size of your scene. But essentially you can draw, draw stuff around, uh, you can subtract stuff. I won't do a whole like breakdown of the software, but essentially this is what we're doing. Um, now, I'm not going to sculpt all of the detail. The idea is that this workflow is supposed to be faster. And the reason it is faster is because of uh, this. So uh, in this tool here, we have a like clay and stuff like that. But there's one called stamps. And if you go to the stamps, they have some default ones called rocks. So you can grab one of these and basically just have some pretty decent rocks to start with. Now, remember, we're going to use AI to enhance this. So the reason we're doing this is because we want to catch a light onto a base mesh. It doesn't have to be perfect mesh. We're not sculpting a rock super, super detailed like if we were gonna do it uh, to make a full on CG asset. What we're doing is we're just getting enough information so that the image to image AI is gonna have light information to work with. So essentially we could take these stamps and just kind of like place them. And that's basically what I did. Um, some sculptor will probably look at this and say like, this is like the wrong way to do it. But the end result I think speaks for itself, which uh, after using the AI to kind of enhance the, the uh, forms there. So essentially you can go around here um, play around and this is why the base mesh is useful because you can kind of use it as a reference guide uh, You can play around with the scale here uh, You can go in there and erase the edges and do like a proper sculpt um, If you want to so this is just uh, also just really fun to play with if you like doing stuff like this So you can smooth it out and different things like that So you want to go around place all the rocks So I'll just show you the one that I did uh, in a second here, but that's the base idea So this is the scene that I did uh, I spent a few more minutes on it Maybe 10 20 minutes it's just slapping it together again we're not trying to create a super detailed sculpture where we go in and we carve every single crack because if you look at a real cliff there's an immense amount of detail actually there so we don't want to spend all the time we're trying to create assets in, in an efficient way so this is kind of like if you were in real life slapping a piece of clay together really really quick that's basically what this is but the reason we're doing this versus having a flat geometry, which in older DMP workflows, and if there's not a lot of parallax, is still totally a legit workflow. Um, you can do it that way, but the reason we're doing this is because the AI will see these different facing angles and the light we're gonna light in, in uh, Blender, so it'll cast nicer shadows. So even if we, if we remesh this later on, which we will do, which will reduce some of this parallax and geometry, we're still gonna get a higher quality result by just doing a little bit more effort. And the idea with image to image, I think that a lot of people might not get right away unless you play around with AI quite a lot, is the closer you can get the result to what you want, meaning the lighting and the textures, the closer it is, the better result you're gonna get. If you just give it a flat surface with nothing to cast shadows or no, no texture on the surface, it's not going to give you the result you want. So you still have to do some work here. And that's why I think it's an it's interesting tool in the workflow. So we'll go from this and then we'll go on to the next step. So this is the mesh after bringing it in from Modeler. So you can export it. You can also remesh it on the way out. Uh, and you can remesh in Blender as well if there's too many faces and things like that. So those are things to keep in mind. Modifier, for example, modifier remesh uh, if you have that problem. You don't want a huge poly count because you want to bring this into Nuke after to project onto. And that's just something to keep in mind. So this is going to give us enough lighting information. I'm using EV right now. That's why you see it flickering as I'm rotating. But if I switch the cycles, we'll get a little bit better bounce lighting in the cracks and things like that as well. So that's the base model, enough to get shadows and highlights. 
Um, the next thing we want to do essentially is give it a base material. So we've already given it a base lighting. I've already done like a light setup. I don't think this was the exact light setup I put. I think I had moved these lights around a bit more, played with the shadows. Um, I also uh, go to cycles. I don't want to do it while I'm recording because it'll probably stutter my microphone um, as the GPU kind of kicks up there. So uh, essentially you want to find a good lighting, good bounce lighting. Um, but then we want to project uh, rock texture. So that's going to give the AI a bit more to work with. Because if, if you give it this, maybe it'll think it's snow or something like that. Because it's just blue. It's flat. There's nothing there to tell it that this is rock under blue hour lighting. So if you project a basic material, and it doesn't have to look good. It just has to be there. So this is literally just a rock texture. I think I got it off Blender Kit, which is like a plug-in that you can get assets. There's a free tier and there's a paid tier. I think it's like 14 bucks a month or something. But you basically get a bunch of textures that you can search through. It's a bit similar to Quixel, um, so kind of like that. But just projecting it from view. So essentially what you want to do, because this thing doesn't have UVs, you basically just go into edit mode. Uh, you can hit A, and then you can hit U, and then say project from view. That's one way to do it. Um, I think this material, the way that it comes, is actually using world coordinates and mapping it, not even using the UVs, the specific one from that asset store. But if you don't have it, just project from view any texture, it's going to work. Now, we don't care that there's a bunch of repeating material, uh, repeating materials here, like tiling. You know, if you were doing this like the right way, you'd have to spend a lot of time painting this material to get the scale to look realistic, following the cracks and all of those things. You'd probably have to bring it into Substance Painter or something like that. So we're avoiding all of those steps by doing this. We're just giving enough detail that, hey, this is clearly rock and this is gonna work with the AI. So next, I'm gonna show you how to get this image out and get it into either Crea AI, which is what we're using, or we're gonna use uh, Magnific AI, which is an alternative. Both work really well. So they do a little bit different things, uh, different offer there, so we're gonna show both. All right, so this is Crea AI. It's essentially stable diffusion image to image, except with their new real-time capability. So essentially, you could like draw something here, uh, and I have the prompt like snake, and then I could just increase the AI strength and then it's gonna to start to look more and more like a snake, but sort of conforming to the drawing that we're working with. So that's the idea with image to image. Um, essentially, you know, push it too far, you're gonna get something totally random and it pretty much might as well be as like mid journey or just stable, stable fusion thing. But image to image is where I think this is the most useful for visual effects artists. So I'm gonna remove this and undo. Uh, and I actually, you can bring in images here. So you can do screen to image. So you can actually stream from like Blender or Nuke or something, but you can actually bring in the image. So I brought in the square render that I told you guys to render out. It's yeah, basically square render in cycles. I'm gonna scale it up here. Now, again, we push it too far, it's gonna go crazy. I have snake as the prompt, so it's gonna do some really weird stuff. But if I say rocky cliffside, detailed uh, cracks, stuff like that, and again, way too far here, but if we bring it down, we really, really bring it all the way down, we start to get some results that could be interesting. So you'll see that it's a little bit blurry initially, and that's okay, because we're gonna use the AI upscaler, which will enhance all of the detail and kind of run this process again. But the reason I like to generate first occasionally is to just see if we can get different results. It changes a little bit more than the upscaler. The upscaler just kind of add details, but this, the generate, kind of changes the details. So it depends what you want, if you want to use the generate workflow or just go straight to upscaling. But essentially, we have the blurry version. We can hit the seed a few times and we'll get different types of things. We can see the result really, really quickly. And as long as the shape isn't changing completely, this is something we could project. So again, once you're done with it, you have one you like, you can say send to enhance and upscale and it will go to this tab here and we can add a lot of detail to this. Uh, alternatively, like I said, you could just take this image directly into the upscaler. So I'm gonna show uh, kind of both there. So this is the result after bringing it in. So we have this blurry one that was there and then we have the upscale and we start to get a lot more detail in here. Uh, for me, this was a little bit too streaky. So there was kind of these streaks that kept appearing in the Kriya upscale. So both upscalers have their own sort of strengths and weaknesses. Um, I think Kriya's uh, more creative in the sense that you can generate different shapes and things like that. But I prefer Magnific's upscaler currently. Um, so you know, both are being developed uh, kind of hardcore right now. So that's the upscale, but let's go into Magnific and see the difference. So we go there. Uh, this is the before. So I just brought the render straight in, didn't even generate 
uh, the, that middle step process and then just upscale from there. And for me, this was a much more realistic result. So uh, especially around like this region, um, kind of where the light's gonna be hitting and we actually are gonna see that detail and it's really respecting the geometry too. If you look at where the light and shadows are and you look at the result that it's giving us, I mean, this is like an incredible detail and that's all the, the crack detail I was explaining earlier. We didn't have to sculpt any of that. So that's pretty cool. We could improve this area a little bit down here um, if you wanted to be picky about it and kind of blend this further. So you could generate additional ones and then just blend them together. So that's something that I actually did in the comp. I, I generated maybe two or three that I liked and then just key mix them together. So um, uh, Magnific, it's not free, but uh, you just drop your image in and then you have some different sliders. It's really, really simple. Creativity will modify it more. HDR, if you push it really far, it'll almost become too detailed. So generally I would just kind of give a, a few random uh, values of these three uh, and generate like 10 images and then just pick the best three and then you can use that in the map painting. So that's how I did it. Uh, and then we'll jump into how to reproject this and finalize this in Nuke. So this is after bringing it into Nuke. I have the uh, first version. I have another version that I kind of cranked up the HDR level on Magnific, which gives it a little bit of a wetter look, which kind of I was going for in the shot to look kind of uh, sort of damp and wet. So this looks slightly more reflective. Like there's things I can key out there to, to give it that look. So I kind of just key mix them together, did a few different grades here. So that's what I did and go to the Project 3D. We're projecting from our projection camera. This is brought in from Blender. It's an Olympic export and we're projecting onto an Olympic export from Blender onto the geometry that we sculpted. So now we have all the parallax and it's gonna feel 3D. It's not gonna feel like we stuck a 2D image in there that doesn't fit the scene. So the lighting fits, the textures fit, everything's working and that's how we can do it. So final shot camera is going to the camera. So we have an animated camera and we have a static camera for the projection. And um, essentially after that, this is the result. I've done some grading and things like that to make it actually fit the scene. So you can see there's definitely some stuff going on here to make the colors work, but we are also stenciling out the extra detail. We don't need the floor and the door and things like that. We want to keep the CG that's in there. So if you look at what's going on before that and we let it cache for a second, this DMP is essentially just being slapped over the top of our CG scene to make it better. So that is like a DMP enhancement. So that's what we can see. We have like the before, it's not working that great. And then we have after, and that's looking a lot better. And then we can obviously do all our hazing and things like that to uh, get a much better result as well to make everything blend. So there's a lot more steps involved there uh, for the creative stuff, but for the DMP, that's about it. Also, if it interests you, we've just released some free VFX smoke assets, like the ones you saw in this shot. So one's for free, uh, the other ones are paid if you want a few more of them, but they're there if you want it. And additionally, uh, there's gonna be a Blender Nuke workshop for this specific two shots. So if you want more workflows like this, or just seeing the entire process of grading and uh, sort of the artistic thinking, a longer process, probably two to three hours of, of a workshop, that'll be there. And essentially, I think what's cool about this as well is it comes with a lot of assets. So it comes with all of the smoke assets instead of getting it separately. So it's basically almost free compared to the price of the assets. And then you also get some lens flare patterns. We're gonna talk about the first shot as well, how to comp lasers, how to do different things like that. So there's a lot more there for the people who want it. And it's basically a, a bit of a lower price course for those who just wanna have a few hours of extra content. And maybe you're more interested in doing your own indie film or just seeing more of these experimental workflows as well as seeing just more artistic and, and look development workflows. So that's there for the people who want it and that's about it. Thanks guys.